Hey guys and welcome back. My name is Daniel Caproni and today we're talking about permutations and combinations. Now I'm making two videos for this series. This first one we're just going to talk about what is the difference between a permutation and a combination in terms of like what it is we're finding. Now this second video is actually going to break down the formulas and how we find that. So if you want to see the formulas and how you go about finding the actual number that goes with it, go ahead and click above on that video up there and that will give you what you're looking for. But for right now, let's dive into what is the difference between a permutation and a combination. First off, in general, when we look at the two of them, both permutations and combinations is a way of measuring how many different groups you can create. Now, you're going to find out very shortly that permutation is when order matters and combination is when it doesn't matter. But in general, both of them are all about finding out all possible groupings you can make in a situation. I went ahead and grabbed a group of my Larrys here to help us figure out what a permutation is. So in this situation, I'm gonna have my 14 Larrys run in a race. And I wanna know how many different ways can we have those 14 Larrys finish in the top three positions. And in this case, the order matters because I'm giving $100 the first place, I'm giving $50 to the second place winner, and I'm giving $25 to the third place winner. Now, because the order matters, that's what makes this a permutation. I'm going to talk more about that in a second. But let's say, what do I mean by how many different ways can we do it? Well, one way would be like this. Number two finishes in first place, number 12 in second place, and number 11 in third. A second way I could do this is by grabbing a new group of three and say that number four comes in first, number eight comes in second, and number 10 comes in third. Well, guess what? It makes a difference what order they come in. For example, number eight here is winning. So he's going to get the $100, whereas number four is going to only get the 50. But if I switch them back, number four gets the $100 and number eight gets the 50. So in this case, this counts as two different ways that I can order my 14 Larrys. Now, when we're looking at permutations, we want to know all possible situations, and that means the different orders matter. Now, that's going to change with combinations as we talk about what it looks like where order doesn't matter. But other possible ways we could talk about situations where order matters for permutation would be like some of these. First off, if you're on any type of team where your position matters. So for example, if I'm looking at baseball, not only the batting order, but even the position you play. So if you play center field or pitcher or first base, if I want to take a group of 20 kids and only choose nine of them to come onto the field and put them in specific positions, and I want to know all the different ways I can position them, that's a permutation question because the order matters. Anytime you define roles in a situation, let's say you're in a club and you want to be president, vice president, or treasurer, all right, the order matters because you have a label as to which position you're fulfilling. Finding out all the possible situations there will always be a permutation. Also, if I'm grabbing a group of letters and they want to know how many different ways I can arrange the letters, we would consider that a permutation because it's not just what letters I get, it's the exact order I'm putting them in. Another common scenario is when you're looking at arrangements like a bookshelf. If I want to know how many different ways I could arrange these books, that's a permutation question because it's not just a matter of which books I'm using, it's a matter of what order I'm placing them on the shelf. So when I'm looking at how many different ways I can do it, it is a a permutation question. Lastly, you can see I have a molecule here because when you're combining different atoms, the order and position of those atoms matter when you're forming a molecule. So when you're talking about all the different things you can make, again, the order matters. So that's a permutation question. So how is this different from a combination? Well, I'm going to use my same group of 14 Larrys here to talk about combinations. Now, what is a combination? A combination, just like a permutation, is counting how many different ways we can do something in a situation. But in this case, the order doesn't matter. So it doesn't matter if I choose four first and then seven or seven first and then four. Really, it just matters at the end of the day how many different groupings I can make. So let's talk about this as an example as well. Let's say I have a wagon and I tell my 14 Larrys that I want to take three of the Larrys with me on a wagon trip. Now, it doesn't matter where they're sitting because they can move around throughout the trip, but I am only going to take three of them. And we're trying to find out how many different combinations of Larry's I can use 
for this wagon trip. So let's go ahead and choose a group of Larrys. There we go. 3, 12, and 13. You guys are the lucky ones that get to go on the wagon trip. And I'm going to take the Larrys out. Well, guess what? If the 12 get chosen second versus third, it doesn't matter. Those are still the three Larrys that get to come with me on our trip. So when we're talking about all the different combinations we could be making here, I don't care about the order. So it's going to cut down a ton on the different ways I can do this. I no longer care about how many different ways I can order them. I just care about how many different groupings I could make. So when you are finding a combination, it means that the order doesn't matter. It just cares about how many different groupings I can choose for my wagon ride. Now, what are some other examples of combinations? Let's say I wanted to find out how many different ways I could make a dodgeball team. So I have a group of 20 kids and I only can make three people on the team, or maybe in this picture you can see more like five people per team. Well, how many different groupings of five kids could I make, all right? Well, maybe Sally's in this group, but Sally's not in the other group. Maybe Michael is in this group, but Michael's not in the other group. Well, that's what I'm looking for for combinations. How many different teams could I make where I'm talking about what combinations of kids are on the team, but I don't care what order they were chosen in. So I could choose Michael first or I could choose him last. It doesn't matter. All that matters is he's part of the team. So a combination is very different from a permutation because of that key concept that it doesn't matter what order you choose the person in. All that matters is that they're either in the group or not. Another one would be when you're looking at your groups in your classroom. It doesn't matter what order the teacher chose the people for a group. It just matters what combinations they are for the group, like which kids are in and which kids are out. Another one that we've covered in this class is experiment design, where we talk about finding your control group or your experiment group. Well, guess what? It doesn't matter what order I choose you in to be in the experiment group. All that matters is that you're part of the experiment group or you're part of the control. Again, in that situation, the order I pick you in does not matter. So when I want to come up with all different combinations, I'm not going to count option number two being first or option number two being second as different combinations they'll count as the same combination as long as the group as a whole is made up of the same people. So let's wrap this up. At the end of the day, both of these are counting how many different ways you can do something. The difference here is that permutation counts every different ordering as a different way of doing it. So you have a whole bunch more of options when you're dealing with permutations. Whereas a combination, the order you pick them in doesn't matter. So when I'm counting all the different combinations, just because I rearrange the people, it still doesn't count as a new one. The only way it counts as a new one is if I literally take one of the pieces out and put a different one in. So combination, it doesn't matter what order. It just matters about who or what is in the group and counting all the different ways you can do that. Now remember, this was only the first video of this series. In the next video, I'm going to actually show you how to find out how many permutations or combinations you have. And we're going to do that by using a formula that's going to give us the answer for each one of these situations. But you got to make sure you join me for that video to figure out how to do it. So today we're going to call it a wrap. I really hope you found something useful in this video. If you did, go ahead and hit the like button below. And remember, if you want to keep getting videos like this, go ahead and hit the subscribe button as well. My name is Daniel Caproni, and this has been Probability and Statistics.